Speak directly into the hearts and minds of your people, Father. Give them a rhema word that will shift the entire trajectory of their lives. God, I'm grateful. I'm appreciative. And I ask, God, that you strengthen me according to your word. We silence all distractions, both internally as well as externally. And we thank you, Father, for freedom and liberation in this place. Your word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Now the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So Lord, I come against any type of religiosity. I come against anything, Father, that would try to hinder the flow of this word. God bless you. to hear CW, Father. Hallelujah. They came to hear what you have to say through CW. Hallelujah. So I thank you for using me as a willing vessel. Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, before you sit down, I want you to touch a few people around you and tell them, meet me at the altar. Babies, you are free to go. Babies, you are free to go. Y'all give the babies a hand. I'm excited. I'm excited. Everybody say that with me one more time. Meet me at the altar. Yeah. On March of 2014, I'm sitting down in my Dodge Charger in the middle of getting ready to make one of the biggest decisions of my life. I'm standing before my wife's uh, mom at the time, and, and I'm sitting, and I got my hand on the steering wheel, and I'm just shaking. I'm scared out of my mind because I'm like, Lord, have mercy. I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know what's about to occur. So I muster up enough strength to go inside, Mr. Steve. Hallelujah. <laughs> I muster up enough, st uh, enough strength to go inside. And as soon as I look her in the face, I said, can I please have your daughter's hand in marriage? She looks me in the eyes and she said, you sure? <laughs> Like she knew something I didn't know. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, I know now. I know yeah, he know now. He know now. He know now. I can't give it back to it. Don't say return something. <laughs> so, 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 so I'm, 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 I'm making this decision. And, 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 and truth be told, I'm scared out of my mind because I don't know how marriage is supposed to go. I've never seen a kingdom relationship displayed. See, 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 in the beginning, I couldn't love my wife the way I was supposed to because I didn't love myself. Amen. I didn't love myself, Jared, because I didn't know myself. Amen. And I had to get to a point to where when I learned who CW was, I was able to love my wife the way that she was supposed to be loved. The Bible says to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Hallelujah. And, and, and I have to ask myself, how did Christ love the church? He loved the church sacrificially. Sacrificially, sacrificially, which brings me to the altar. Everybody say the altar. As we stand here today, there's some things that we got to leave at this altar. As we stand here today, we have to realize that the altar has to do with slaughtering some things. The altar has to do with you sacrificing some things. And if truth be told, the way the church is ran in today's society, the altar has to be altered. The altar has to be altered because every time we come to the altar, we come into the altar for another prophetic gift. Amen. We come into the altar because we're coming with our hand out unto the Lord instead of having our hands up in total surrender to the Lord. There are some things that we have to bring to the altar in order for sacrifice to take place. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. <laughs> it is no longer, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives me, lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh or in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The next verse goes on to say, I do not frustrate the grace of God. <laughs> I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. I don't ever want to stand before the Father and He said, You know what? You frustrated my grace. <laughs> you frustrated my grace. My mercy ran out on you. I know it's new every morning, but the Bible also said that I'm tired of letting you off the hook. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 15, verse 6 in the message translation. I want you to do me a favor and start off by going to Revelation chapter 19. Hallelujah. Revelation Hallelujah. chapter 19. Everybody say, meet me at the altar. Meet me at the altar. I thought I was going to talk about Jagged Edge. I'm not. <laughs> Revelation <laughs> chapter 19. And let's start at verse 7. Let's start at verse 7. Meet me at the altar. It's where the couple will stand and become one in marriage. It will share their vows, their promises, and lock it. Everybody say lock it. Lock it. With two rings. It is an outward expression of the frame for the couple's love story. Everybody say a love story. Love story. A love. A love story. Let us, everybody say let us. Let who is the us that is talking about? It is talking about those who are a part of the pride of Christ. Can I ask you a question as I stand here today? Are we the bride of Christ? Amen. Are we married to Christ this present state right now? No, we're not. We're in what you call the betrothed state. Everybody say the betrothed stage. The betrothed stage will be more like a temporary or more like an engagement until we actually step into that place of the wedding. This is where the wedding takes place. Let us rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice means to celebrate. And be, be what you guys? Be glad. And give, give to freely transfer the possession of something to someone. And give him glory. That's the problem. We want the glory for ourselves. Amen. Jesus said, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. John chapter 8 verse 54. If I glorify myself, the, my glory means nothing. That was the problem with the enemy. He wanted the glory to come to him and not through him. When the Father uses you in whatever capacity it is, he's going to always make sure that the glory is going to always flow through you. He doesn't want it to come to you because then that takes the focus off of him. And the Bible says that no flesh can glory in his presence. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 29. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. For the wedding of the goat. The lamb. Huh? The lamb. I ain't got no glasses. I don't wear glasses. The wedding, of, the wedding of the lamb has what? Has come. And his bride has done what? Has made herself ready. So you mean to tell me that in the middle of me walking down that aisle, I'm going to be the one that has to get myself ready. I'm going to have to be the one to get myself ready. It says that the preacher made the bride ready. I don't think it says that. I don't think it says that. Watch this. The entrance of the word comes from the preacher. The unfolding of the word comes from you spending time with the Holy Spirit on your own. The entrance of the word. The entrance of the word. So when you come to church, what ends up happening in fellowship is that you are only getting a confirmation of a word that you've been studying all week long. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Has made herself ready Prepared. Everybody say prepared. 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 Ready in advance. Proper preparation produces poor performance. Proper preparation produces poor performance. This is making sense to y'all. Let's go to the next verse. Uh huh. Uh huh. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to what you guys to wear. To wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's. What kind of people? Holy people. Everybody say holiness. 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 Make every effort to live at peace with all men and to be holy. Hallelujah. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord according to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Holiness is still right and holiness has absolutely nothing to do with your clothes and everything to do with your insides. Holiness is the very essence of who you are. Holiness is your conduct, your character. It is the makeup, the DNA of what the Father has impressed and imparted on the inside of you. Holiness. Be holy as I'm holy. Amen. And it's time in this last day that we put a difference. Amen. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 10 verse 10 to put difference between holy and unholy. Between clean and unclean. Everybody say put a difference. Put a difference. 
put a difference, put a difference. And the reason why the church is in the state that it's in is because we have not put a difference. There is no line of demarcation. There is no differentiation that's going on because the church wants to look exactly like the world. When the Bible says to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Y'all got me preaching this before. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are what, you guys? Invited. Invited. Oh, Lord. So this is invitation only. Many are called. But few, but few are, few are chosen, Matthew 22, verse 14. Wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. I'll never forget everybody say B.C. 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 And I'm not talking about the power. B.C., this is before Christ. This is before Christ and this is before Caleb. It's before Caleb. I, I remember, uh, I was out there. I wasn't thugging. I don't want no thug. Not at all. That was not me. I didn't do that, Ralph. No. But <laughs> I went to the club. Amen. See dubs in the club. So I'm at the uh, I'm lined up. I'm lined up. I'm lined up. I'm lined up. And I'm getting ready to go in because I wanna I wanna <laughs> like everybody else. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. So it's my turn to get up. Trying to get my wristband like everybody else. And that was a bouncer. Everybody say a bouncer. Wow. I'm scared of you. So he, he looked at me and he said, you can't get in there like that. He looked at me and the people that were with me. He said, no, 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 y'all can't get in there like that. I said, why? He said, because for one, you're not dressed right. I said, what you mean? He said, no, 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 no. He said, this is a dress code only. In order for you to get in this club, you got to be dressed the proper way. In order for you to get in this club, you have to make sure that you have a collared shirt on. You got to make sure that, that, that your shoes and everything are inside. You got to make sure that you're dressed appropriately. And I'm telling y'all right now by the spirit of the living God that you're not going to just be able to slide into the kingdom of God any way you want to. There's some things that you won't have to sacrifice. There's some things that you won't have to slaughter. Huh, the Bible says that no flesh, no flesh will be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Huh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot stand before a holy king the way you want to and think that you're going to make it in. It says that if the righteous scarcely be saved. <laughs> what will come of that of those who are unbelievers in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 18 if the righteous scarcely be saved I thank God that he doesn't give us progress reports I thank God that he doesn't give us a report card because what if you got a 69 and couldn't make it in Jesus. what if what if what if what if what if you got a 69 and couldn't make it in. What if I got a 69 and couldn't make it in? What if, God, I bless your holy name that you don't count my acts, but you do it because of the blood of Jesus? Amen. That's what I'm clothed with. I'm clothed with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that he has justified me by his blood, according to Romans 5, verse 9. I have redemption through his blood, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. He took his own blood and went to secure our salvation forever, according to Hebrews 9, verse 12. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins, according to Hebrews 9, verse 22. And Leviticus 17, verse 11 says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. So when I stand before the Father, I don't plead guilty or not guilty. I plead the blood. <laughs> I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. So, so the next month, the next month, this was March and April, the next month, I... Remember my wife, and we're preparing. I want you to do me a favor. Put that picture up there for me. Put that picture up there for me. We're preparing for the wedding, and I'm young. I'm 27 years old at the time, and I'm scared. I'm like, man, I don't know how this is supposed to go. And it seems like the aisle was long. It was far from me. And I looked up, and... When I looked up and I saw my bride coming down, I'm standing at the altar. 
skating, <laughs> shaking. Like, Lord, what in the world is going on? I don't know why she wanted us to wear this color, but we wore it. I'm 27 years old, you guys. I'm 27 years old. I had a face smooth as a baby. And, 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 and yes, that was a problem, child. Jesus. I thank you, Lord. 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 So I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm standing at the altar. It's the longest walk of my life watching her come in. And as she's coming in, she's taking a step after a step. And I'm at the altar with all kind of thoughts going through my mind. Are you pulling the trigger prematurely? Are you going to be fit to be the man that God has called you to be for this family? How in the world can you handle not just a wife, but now you got a daughter in the midst of it now too? You, you, you might as well say no. You might as well say no. And, and, and as I think about this from a spiritual connotation, how are we going to be when we get ready to stand before the Father on that day? What kind of thoughts are going to race through our minds on that day when we see the Father standing there with his book opened up? Oh, my God. And the Son standing right next to him, waiting on his bride to come down. That I, oh God, I'll be scared out of my mind. But I know. Hallelujah. That I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I wasn't <laughs> the best person, Father, but I don't think I was the worst either. Amen. And your Bible tells me, God, that if I live according to these scriptures, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new has come according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So you don't hold me captive to who I used to be. You don't hold me captive to my past. You don't care about everything that I went through previously. God, I stand before you clean as I was in the Garden of Eden. Clean. Clean. So Shawana comes up. And I'm watching her, and her little hand doing this. I know I already worked up the nerve to be okay, and she, I said, she wanna stop. We doing this in the middle of getting ready to get married. I said, stop, bro. I said, you gotta calm me down. I said, you gotta calm down, cause you finna get me worked up. And she said, okay, 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 okay. Bro, chill, man. Come on, man, you breathing all down my way, girl. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> got to a point to where I started to I started to calm myself down I started to quiet my soul sometimes you got to quiet your soul when you're feeling anxious Amen. sometimes you got to quiet yourself when you're feeling a certain type of way on the inside and realize that greater is he who is in me <laughs> so we end up saying I do and as soon as I said I do and I did she, at first, I wish I hadn't. <laughs> at first, she wished she hadn't. And I don't know, this ain't just I'm telling you. Because I realized that she came in and she had a backpack full of situations. And CW had a backpack full of situations. Amen. And the Bible says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. So I had to carry my burdens. She had to carry her burdens. But God brought us together to be able to carry each other's burdens. Amen. Watch this. Kind of rewind. Everybody say rewind. 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 So before this day, before this day, I remember proposing to Shawana. And I believe it. That's okay. And 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 as soon as I proposed to her, you know, it was my first time getting down on a knee. I didn't know which one I was supposed to get down on. <laughs> so I really didn't see. I didn't know. Can I do it like this? So I really didn't understand which knee I was supposed to get down on, but then I actually, you know, I'm a studier, so I went and looked up why people get on their knee, and they get on the knee as a result. Watch this, and this comes from medieval term or medieval times, and they got uh, they got down on their knee as a result for knights who would get down in respect to royalty. Hallelujah. In respect to royalty. So when I got down on my knee, I saw my bride as royal. When I got down on my knee, I realized that this woman is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs with no fear of the future. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread lightly. She would not hinder him but help him all her life. I'm speaking it over her, not realizing that I'm getting down as a result 
that this wife that God has entrusted to my care, that he's taken from out of my rib to stand alongside of me, this woman is going to be the person to help me exponentially do what God has called me to do. She's a help meet. She's supposed to help me meet the vision that God has placed on me inside of me. And so, and so, and so, does your neighbor say and so? And so, and so, and so, I'm not done studying, I'm not done studying. There, there, there was a man in 1979 by the name of Frank Richards. Everybody say Frank Richards. Frank, 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 Frank Richards. Come here, bro. Come here, wife. Come here, wife. Come here. There was a man by the name of Frank Richards, and, 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 and so he was, uh, he was, he was, he was, he was more of an engineer, right? He was an engineer, and, um, and what he was doing was, he was a product engineer, rather, and what he was doing was, he was saying, you know what? I'm tired of my daughter sucking her thumb. So I gotta come up with something to help her stop sucking her thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his daughter had a real bad problem with sucking her thumb. And so he's a product engineer, and he said, I gotta come up with something that would take her focus, watch this, take her focus from off of sucking her thumb and put it onto something else. See, sometimes this is what the enemy does, does to each and every last one of y'all. He gives you a pacifier to make you think you're eating something when you're really not. <laughs> a pacifier is there to trick the brain into thinking that it's eating something when it's really not. And a lot of you people are going to different places and tricking you. Amen. You think you're eating meat, <laughs> but you ain't, man, you ain't touched the surface. Jesus. You got cheese nips in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So watch this, watch this, watch this. So this is... This is what Frank, Frank, everybody say Frank. Frank. Frank came out with this. What's that called? A ring pop. A ring pop. Frank came out with a ring pop. So. Let's see what Frank talking about. I told you I didn't know what you want to get down on. Let's see what Frank got. Huh? Your finger done got so big over the years. <laughs> and then it matched, the, it matched the green, too. Right? <laughs> oh, man. You want to go now. Golly, that thing say watermelon. It don't say no apple. <laughs> That's another thing that I had to realize, too. The two really become one flesh. I ain't never eat like I eat now. <laughs> she eat and I gain the Watch this, watch this, you guys. Watch this. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, it says to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Everybody say innocent. Innocent. That's what I want to focus in on. What I want to focus in on. We live in a society now where innocence has been taken away Amen. from the marriage covenant. Amen. Purity is what the Father is looking for. Yeah. And that's what's been taken away. From any type of relationship. When I was younger, watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use two people. Two people. Don't be good. Y'all two. Can y'all come real quick? Y'all two. Since y'all right there in that row, I want y'all to do me a favor. Come real quick. So I would watch my sister. I watch my sister and her little friends when we were younger, and they would do, they would do something. I want y'all to stand right here for me. Stand in front of the church. Right here. Y'all turn a little bit. Turn, turn facing each other. Turn facing each other. They, they had a little game. Y'all don't talk. Y'all don't talk. I remember them doing that. And so, I would ear hustling. Everybody say ear hustling. I would ear hustling, and I would listen to them say things like this. And I'm going to just use me and my wife. C.W. and Shawana sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First come love, then come marriage. Then come a baby with the baby. That was the innocence that I used to watch this. I used to listen to when I was younger. I would watch my sister and her friends. They would always do that. But the innocence has been robbed in today's society. Now it's key. And you got teachers doing that with the kids. Now you got, watch this. Now you got the Keisha Cole effect. That was the innocent, but now it's been robbed. It's been 
snatched in today's society, and the church got to restore it. Marriage should be out of bomb, my God. Hey, and the marriage bed kept pure. Hebrews 13, verse 4. You want scripture? Look at that Bible right there. Is this making sense to y'all? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Everybody say we got to get back to purity. We got to get back to purity. We have to get back. We got to get back. We got to get back to purity. We got to get back to purity. Now, they have something, watch this. They have something called a walk away wife syndrome. Hear me now. Let me teach you a little bit. They have something called a walk away wife syndrome. When this woman has had enough, she feels a disconnect from her groom. Because he's never ever there anymore. And I had a woman, watch this you guys, everybody say true story. I had a woman come up to me and my wife and she had tears in her eyes and she said, Lord, she said, I'm, I'm tired of being the pursuer. For once in my life, I want somebody to pursue me. And the Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Because there's going to be a time where you're going to look around. You're going to look to the right. You're going to look to the left. You're going to look all around you. And the Father's voice will know, will be nowhere to be heard. He won't be able to be found. That's why you have to seek him now. Seek him while he may be found. Don't wait until things get hard for you to seek the Lord. Seek him with all of your heart now. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. <laughs> Jeremiah 29 verse 13. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? The walk away wife syndrome to where at one point in time you were so close. You were so knitted. Nothing can, nothing can pull you apart. You were inseparable. And and it's said to believe. Raise your hand if you ever heard the saying, tie the knot. It's said to believe. It says to believe that water makes knots stronger. <laughs> the more wet the night gets, the stronger it becomes. And I had no idea that over the years, all of the tears that fell down onto the knot will make my relationship and the covenant stronger. Because you have to realize that marriage is not a contract, it's a covenant. <laughs> marriage is not a contract, but it's a covenant. A covenant, a covenant, it comes to an expiration. It comes to an end, but a covenant or a contract, rather, or but a covenant is an ongoing relationship that has no appointed end. Amen. A covenant is an ongoing relationship that has no appointed end. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. That's an ongoing relationship that has no appointed end. Love keeps no record. Is this making sense to y'all? Is this word blessing y'all so far? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Watch this. They have something called a bride price. Everybody say a bride price. It's a payment to the bride's family for her hand in marriage. In the form of livestock, uh, uh, money, commodity. They, they, they pay what you call a dowry. This is a bride price. But watch this. The male's family has to, pray, has to pay for that woman or has to pay for that bride. And we've been bought, and we've been bought with a price. And the price that we've been purchased with is the purchase of blood. Yeah. Jesus' blood has paid the price for us. That's the, the bride price. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. Are y'all being blessed by this word so far? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now, get ready to wrap it up here in a little bit. I want you to do me a favor and go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2 in the message translation. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2 in the message translation. Mm -hmm. Caleb came up to me the other day. He said, Dad. So yeah, he said, I had a dream last night. So what you dream about? So I dream about your wife. <laughs> Say you what? He said I dream about your wife. The uh, I said you dream. I said I said who is my wife? He said my mom. I said why you ain't just say my mom? He <laughs> said I dream about your wife. I said what was she doing in the dream? I don't know. She was just driving a black car, but it was your wife. I just had a dream about your wife. 
I'm like, Kayla, why do you say the stuff that you say? I said, yeah, that's my wife. And I can say it proudly. Mm, that's, that's, my wife. that's my wife. Watch this. Get out. Everybody say get out. Get out. Get out. Is that the message translation? Mm-hmm. Nice. Get out in the streets and call to who? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. God's message. I remember your youthful, what you guys? Loyalty. Loyalty. Our love as newlyweds, my God in heaven. You stayed with me through the wilderness years. Stuck with me through all the hard places. Go to verse 3 for me. Israel was God's holy choice. The pick of the crop. Anyone who laid a hand on her would soon wish he hadn't. God's decree. Go back to verse 2 for me. Go back to verse 2. Get out in the streets and call to Jerusalem God's message. I remember your youthful loyalty. Everybody say loyalty. Loyalty, loyalty is not faithfulness because you can be faithful at being disloyal. Yeah. Loyalty is when you have my back behind my back. Yeah. That's loyalty. Yeah. Loyalty. <laughs> loyalty is when you have my back behind my back. When you know they say, okay, but what did you say? Jesus. Don't come and tell me what they said if you didn't step up for me and you knew my character. Is this making sense to you? Loyalty is when you have my back behind my back. Our love as newlyweds. Everybody say newlyweds. Newlyweds is anywhere from six months to two years. Six months to two years. They have what you call the infatuation phase. The infatuation phase where you just lovey-dovey. You you have the eyes of a dove. Everything is just straight, pinpoint. Everything is just right there. And you're like, oh my God. Just flutters all day long. The butterflies. And it's said to believe that the infatuation phase fades out after 12 months. After that, you have to be able to live on love. It's just making sense to y'all. My God, my God. You stayed with me through the wilderness years. Stuck with me through all the hard places. I remember asking a young lady a hypothetical question. I said, you know what? Hypothetically speaking, and I'm not saying that this is the 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 the, the truth in the matter, uh, the truth of the matter, but hypothetically speaking, I said, you know what? We are together, but I wanted to marry you. What if I didn't have enough money to get you the ring? But we both wanted to be married. We both agreed to be married. She said, I would say, why don't you wait to get the money to get me a ring? Ooh, wow. And that right there, that showed me. And I was right in the middle of the fast. I was in the middle of a fast. I had consecrated and set it myself apart. And I said, Lord, show me what's next between me and this individual. And he showed me. Jesus. That's one thing about the Lord. When he opens your eyes to a situation, you better believe him the first time. Stop giving people chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. You are not a floor man. You are not a rug. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So I asked my wife a hypothetical question. I said, "She want to just, you know, this is when she and I got together." I said, "You know, uh, I said, what if? What if it's just a hypothetical? What if we didn't have enough money to be able to do all of the things that you know we wanted to do off top, just starting off? But I knew we can kind of build to it and everything like that. And we had to live in a hotel and all these different things." I said, "Would you leave me, or would you still want to be with me?" She said, "Yeah, boy." Hallelujah. You say, because I ain't marry you for stuff. I married you for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, that's, that's the one I need to be with. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalms of Psalms, chapter 3, verse 4, I found the one my soul loves. Yeah, <laughs> Hallelujah. I can look at something that's physical. I can look at something and say, oh, she a 10, but she's still a delusional dime piece. <laughs> 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 I could look at something and oh, I could look at something externally and say, oh, oh, yeah, she's straight. Yeah, physically. Yeah, we may connect physically, but man, what does she do for my soul? What does she do for my spirit? What does he do for your soul? What does he do for your uh, for your spirit? You looking for a man, six, six, six. Uh oh. Six feet, six figures, six pack. <laughs> And that gave it away right there. That's why you walk around 666. <laughs> you got a whole <laughs> you got a whole black eye, but I love him though. Jesus. Oh, well, that went under. Yeah, that went somewhere else. That was somebody. That was somebody. My God. Watch this. 
Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> if you ain't squirming, I ain't doing something right. <laughs> Get out in the streets and call to Jerusalem God's message. I remember your new, your youthful loyalty, our love as newlyweds. You stayed with me through the wilderness years, stuck with me through all the hard places. Amen. Have you ever would just remember back on when you were first saved? Man. The Bible says, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Amen. And Psalms 51 verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Do you remember where all night long you would just be talking with the Lord? You would just be fellowshipping with him. And then eventually, hours turn into minutes. Minutes turn into seconds. And then before you know it, days go by and you haven't even talked to the Lord. And you got to get back to that place the way you're like, Lord... You never left. I was the one who left you. Amen. And the father is looking around today and he's saying, Adam, <laughs> Adam, where are you? Adam, where, where are you? We meet at the cool of the day every single day. I held up my end of the bargain. I held up my end of the deal. Adam, where are you? Jesus. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> We got to get back to that place Amen. to where all day long you're fellowshipping with him. Amen. All day long you're including him in every single thing Amen. that you do. Amen. Does this make sense to so Amen. Now, I, uh, I want to read something to you guys. I want to read something to you guys. I, uh, I remember when, when, you know, when I was younger, going back to the innocence. And the purity. That was a uh, <clears throat> that was a young girl that I had a crush on, <laughs> little little kid, and and I remember I remember writing a letter. Do you like me? <laughs> yes, no, 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 or maybe, maybe, so. maybe, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. So 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 she ended up. You know what I'm saying? She ended up circling one, sending it back to me. I'm like, yo, yo, she liked me. She liked me. But watch this. That was the innocence of it. Now, in today's society, they have something in school called sexting. Not texting, but sexting. Now, watch this. Let me read out to you what sexting is. Watch this. Sexting starts as early as eight years old. More than one in ten kids with smartphones will become exposed to sexting. The study shows by 13, more than a third of children who have a smartphone will be exposed. However, the study found that sexting starts earlier for girls. This is why there has to be a level of purity, you guys. This is why we have to come around these children and this next generation to let them know what their worth is. Yes. To let them know what their value is. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Is this blessing y'all this morning? Now watch this. Watch this, you guys. Watch this. Ah, go ahead and put that, that. Get ready to put that on for me. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to preach to y'all or teach to y'all today about. Marriage and meeting people at the altar, and we not give you an illustration of it. So what we're gonna do today is, I'm gonna give you guys an illustration of marriage, because you don't realize that y'all are witnesses that are sitting in on an actual marriage today. So I want everybody to stand up for me. <laughs> Hallelujah! 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 I want my bride. To go to the back room. My God in heaven. I want my bride to go to the back room. Okay. I want my groom to come up here with me. Hallelujah. Oh. 
Hallelujah. charge to the bride and groom. As I read scriptures from Ephesians chapter 5, I want you both to pay very close attention to the words stated here. These are God's words that the Holy Spirit will honor as we stand on them in faith. The world has the idea that marriage is simply a legal contract. It is a legal contract. We do not make light of that. But at the same time, it is a spiritual contract. When words of faith are spoken according to the word of God between two born-again believers, the power of God goes into operation. A miracle takes place when the faith of two people, of these two people, is released in God's power. God honors their faith and brings the two of them into union. With these thoughts in mind, listen carefully to these words. As I read from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 32. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own, or he who loves his wife, loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. To the groom. Wesley Dean Heinchel, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell within your heart? Okay. To the bride, Ms. Jaden Edwards, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell within your heart? To the bride and groom, now upon this, profession, this public profession of your faith, you have made known to all men that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord and Savior. I make this announcement before this congregation and these witnesses. When two people join themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, according to God's own words, they stand cleansed. As cleansed before God as Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden before they sinned. This is not just a forgiveness of sin. The Bible says any man who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. So from this day forward, everything that has taken place in your past no longer exists in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. 
a miracle took place when you made Jesus the Lord of your life. The Holy Spirit used the very power of God, his creative power to cause your spirit to be reborn. It is the same power God used when he raised Jesus from the dead. And he joins you to Jesus by that power. When two born again believers come before God to the join, excuse me, to be joined together as husbands and wife and, and wife, the apostle Paul calls it a mystery and says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. When you made Jesus the Lord of your lives, you were joined to him. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 17 says you are one spirit with him. Ephesians chapter five, verse 30 says you have become one flesh with the Lord. You are his. He is yours. You are together. You are one together with him. I want you to understand that if you rightly discern the body of Christ, then you rightly discern the miracle that takes place in marriage. Your spirits will be joined together and you will become one. You will not be one in the eyes of the law only. There is something much more powerful that happens. The very creative power of God will join you together. The same power that joins you with Jesus when you made him your Lord. Don't ever tamper with that union. The love of God doesn't say, I love you, uh, but do you really love me? The love of God simply says, I love you. That's all it ever says. Don't ever tamper with that miracle. Don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Something holy, something beyond reproach will take place by the spirit of God inside your bosom. And it is a precious thing to the witnesses. I want to speak this to the witnesses here. Jesus said in Matthew 18 verse 19, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. You are not here just because of tradition. You are here for a serious purpose. To bear witness forever of this miraculous union that will take place and to add your agreement to it before God. Don't ever tamper with that agreement. From this day forward, regardless of what comes, you are in agreement with this union. Don't ever attempt in any way to cause it to be anything other than a happy union. Amen? Amen. To the congregation, in the eyes of Almighty God, these two people are washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have prayed, and before the Lord God himself, they believe with all their hearts that it is the perfect will of God for them to be joined together in the Spirit. They have made their decision, so from now until the end of the age... I charge you to do everything in your power to see that this union remains solid and strong, happy and prosperous. Woe be unto any person who would tamper with it and cause it to be anything other than prosperous in the eyes of God. This is a miraculous thing and it is God's doing. Amen. So the groom. Y'all scoot up a little bit. Y'all ain't got cooties, man. <laughs> Wesley Dean Heinzel, do you take Jaden Edwards as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her and care for her for the rest of your life? I want you to repeat this after me. Say, I, Wesley Heinzel, according to the word of God, leave my father and my mother, and I join myself to you to be a husband to you from this moment forward. We shall be one. To the bride, Ms. Jaden Edwards, do you take Wesley Heinz as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your life? Okay, so I want you to repeat this after me. Say, I, Jaden Edwards, according to the word of God, submit myself to you, to be a wife to you from this moment forward. We shall be one to the groom. I have the rings. Can y'all bring those, those rings up for me? <coughs> Thank you, man. A ring is a very precious thing. A token of faith. Okay. A token of faith and love. This ring is made from precious metal. It is a never-ending circle that indicates the continuing love of God, a love that never fails, never presents itself heartily, nor is it puffed up. The love of God and the faith of God causes his power to move in your lives. 
Wear these rings as a continual reminder of your faith and continual reminder of the confession of faith you have made to each other and to God. The word of God says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Ephesians 6.16. If anyone could break up this union, it would be Satan. So give him no place. Give him no place. This is forever to the groom. Take this ring. And with this ring, place it on her finger and say to her, with this ring, I thee wed. It is a token of my love for you and a token of my faith that I release now in Jesus' name. Okay. Now to the groom, a ring can mean two different things. It can be a never-ending sign of love or it can be a shackle. I charge you to remember this always. This woman stands by your side, not under your feet. You have the responsibility of being the head of this union. You have spiritual responsibility. I want you to wear this ring in remembrance that she is your helpmate. This ring must never be a shackle of dominance, but always a reminder of faith and love to the bride. I want you to place this ring on his finger. With these words in mind, there is no place in the word of God that gives people the right to dominate one another. Your vows have stated that you submit to one another in the responsibilities of this life, expecting God and his power to always make the difference. So place this ring on his finger, and as you do, say to him, with this ring, I be wed. I give it to you as a token of my faith. I believe with all my heart that this is forever. It represents my love and my faith in Jesus' name. Amen. As a representative of Jesus Christ before Almighty God and in the name of the Father, of His Son Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I now pronounce you together, husband and wife, you may kiss your bride. showing your love, God, through this beautiful union today. And Lord, we just say that if there's anything that we need to bring to your altar personally, Lord, before you can use us, God, on another level, God, we give you full access and full permission. Those who don't know you, we believe by faith that they come into the absolute fullness of who you are. And God, we do not take this opportunity lightly, God, that you called and chosen us for a time such as this. And Lord, those who may have known you, but they have deviated from the path of righteousness, we just believe by faith, God, that they come back into your open arms. Your word says in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14, that you're married to the backslider. Meaning, Father, you didn't leave them, they left you. But you're here to welcome them back with open arms. We love you, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, God. Y'all praise God here if y'all got some.